Hi guys, good morning. In this question, we'll see count ways to group overlapping ranges. Now, the question itself is pretty straightforward and simple that we are given a 2D integer array ranges where ranges of i is the start and end of a range. Good. And it denotes all integers numbers between start i and end i, both inclusive. So basically, if my range says 5 to 7, so I will have all the elements from 5 to 7 contained in the ith range okay uh, you have to split ranges into two groups and it, the groups can be empty so i have the, these two groups let's say group one and group two i have to split these ranges let's say i have these all ranges i have to split these into these two groups which means group one and group two and it can be that okay one group is empty it's also possible each range belong to exactly one group i have to place one group in exactly one range into exactly one group which means at a particular time at a particular snapshot one group can one range can go to only one group it's not like that okay it can be here also and here also at the same time it can't be happen it can't happen okay any two overlapping ranges must belong to the same group let's say if it would have been something like one comma six so it's easily overlapping right because one comma six overlap with five comma seven so if these two are overlapping it is mandatory that if my five comma seven is in group one so one comma six also needs to be in group one cool um any two overlapping ranges must belong to the same group we just saw two ranges are said to be overlapping if there exists at least one integer which is present in both the ranges as we said what this range means is it's one two three four five and six what, did, what does the range 5 to 7 means is 5, 6, 7. And as you can easily see that these two integers are common. Or if any one integer would also have been common in both these groups. So in both these ranges. So these ranges are set to be overlapping. Right. Cool. Uh, for example, it just showed you, okay, what is an overlapping group? So 1, 3 because it, because it includes 1, 2, 3. And... 2 comma 5 which includes 2 3 4 and 5 so these are overlapping right because 2 and 3 are overlapping values so these two are also overlapping ranges okay it just shows and it says that the answer can be pretty large so the number of ways to put these ranges in those two groups it can be pretty large so just return modulo so i hope that you guys understood the problem statement let's see this example 6 comma 10 and 5,15. As you can easily see that it's a range, it's a range. As you can easily see that both ranges are overlapping to each other, right? So I can have both of them bucket. I just make a bucket of both of these ranges and I can put it in a bucket. Okay, I have one bucket. Now I have a group one and a group two. So one option is I can place it in a group one and the rest group 2 is empty another option is that i can place this bucket bucket here indicates that it has these two ranges which are showed so this one bucket and next option was that i just place it in the group 2 and group 1 is empty so these two options are there and it's the same reason we have a 2 here let's see this example 1 3 a 10 20 and 2 5 and 4 8 so let's say we have this group called as 1 3 which means 1, 3 is a group. Okay, cool. A 2, 5 is a group. Okay, cool. A 2, 5 is a group. Okay, cool. A 4, 8 is a group. Which means a 4, 8 is a group. A 4, 8 is a group. Cool. A 10, 20 is a group. Which means a 10, 20 is a range. Cool. So, now as you can easily see that all these three ranges are overlapping. Right. So, I can just make a bucket 1 out of it. Let's name it as a bucket of 1 to 8. Because it's including from 1 up till 8 kind of right. So I can just name the bucket as bucket 1 to 8. As a range I named it as 1 to 3. I can name the bucket as 1 to 8. Now here the bucket is simple 1. Because it is separate. So this bucket is just a bucket of 10 to 20. Cool. Now you can easily see that I have 2 buckets. And how many groups are there? 2 groups right. Group 1 and group 2. And as we know that for 1 bucket I have 2 options. I can place it in group 1 and group 2. Okay. I have two options for bucket 1. And same goes that I have two options for bucket 2. And I have to place. It's not like that I, I, I don't, I can't place. I have to place. So it's just a 4. That, okay. 
bucket one will go. Let's nail that same idea. Bucket one and it's bucket two. So one option is bucket one, bucket two. Another option is bucket two, bucket one. Another option is bucket one, bucket two. Another option is bucket two, bucket one. So we had these four options where we saw that okay, we can do a bucket one, bucket two in group one. Here I said a group one. Here it is group two. So here it is bucket one, bucket two. Here it is bucket two, bucket one. Here it is bucket one, bucket two. And it's empty. It's empty. As we said that the groups can be empty itself. So you can easily saw that okay, what happened here? That every bucket has two options. So basically every bucket had two options. Either it can go or it cannot go. So I just said okay, the bucket one has two options. Group one, group two. Okay. Bucket two has two options. Group one, group two. And as both of them has to go in some group or the other so we have to do a multiplication because it's not an or operation it's an and operation bucket one has to go and bucket two has to go cool now let's see what does overlapping ranges mean so basically overlapping ranges will lie in the same group so we made a bucket out of that we made a bucket out of overlapping ranges now let's say we have x buckets now let's say we have made x buckets now we have to place in two groups as i showed that every bucket has two options it can go to the group one or the group two so as it has two options group one or group two so in total it has these two options a bucket has two options it can grow in group one or group two now for x buckets every bucket has to go in one group or the another every bucket has to go in the groups so bucket one has to go and bucket two has to go and bucket three has to go and so on up till bucket x so it has to it has to it has to it has to so it is for sure that if we got to know by anyhow that if we have x buckets the number of ways to go or to move those buckets in those two groups will be two rich power x right okay now we are sure that okay Aryan, uh we will find the number of buckets and then ultimately we will say a to reach power x to get the number of ways to move those x buckets into my these two groups now the problem occurs is how you will find those buckets how you will find the number of buckets so let's we had these n ranges right we had these n ranges so what we'll try to do is we will try to make x buckets out of it which means that i just try to group every range which is overlapping into one bucket so how to find number of buckets every range i'll put place it in one bucket and so as i will get number of buckets okay so every overlapping range i will place in a bucket now how you will find okay uh Aryan, if we have overlapping ranges like these two or these all these three are overlapping right so it will form a one bucket but how to know that i'll just have all these three ranges overlapping how to know that for this let's see this example the same one example two which is mentioned in the problem itself so if we have these ranges 1 3 10 20 a 2 5 and a 4 8 so you can easily see that if see if i just want to know that okay the range one overlaps with another range so i just try to bring that particular range which is far as close as this range which means that i'll just sort my ranges on the basis of start index it's my start it's my end it's my start it's my end so i'll just place i'll just sort all my ranges on the basis of start index so every range come close to each other what will happen is after sorting on the basis of start index every range came close to each other now it will be easy for me to check okay if the consecutive ranges are overlapping or not because i have to reduce the complexity right i just can't go and see okay if this range is overlapping with some other range if this range particular range is overlapping with some range which is far away i can't just see that it will have o of n square complexity so i just have to bring the range closer that i can compare the consecutive ranges in o of one because i and i plus one i can compare easily right so i'll just compare these two ranges oh these are overlapping right so how about one thing we know if all these three are overlapping i can just make up one bucket out of it which is this bucket up to this and it's not overlapping so it's another bucket now what can happen how can a two range thing can have bucket so they can have three options option one is that one range is it does not overlap 
and when I say I say it as that both the ranges are consecutive that no other range would be as close as this particular range so basically if it is range 1 and it is range 2 so both the range are as close to each other as possible so now range 1 and range 2 if they don't have this B and C kind of intersecting with each other it means that they don't overlap which means if my B is less than C it means that they don't overlap and my B is as you can see it's let's say it's left eye it's right eye it's left eye it's right eye right now if these two overlap which means my B is more than or equal to C then both these buckets will overlap ultimately I will get a bucket as A to D because now the range will be from A to D right it will be something like this what if this another range overlaps although it comes after this range A as I said I will sort on the basis of starting index so every range will try to come as close to this to is possible but still it's smaller right but still the occupancy is up till b so i'll just make a bucket which is a to b now how this thing will help me is if i had these two ranges i just made a bucket which is this but now still it just overlaps with another range itself so i'll just place it i'll just expand my bucket one itself and just place my that range also in bucket 1 because it is intersecting with my bucket 1. If I go on to the next range, it's not intersecting with my bucket 1, right? Okay, so I can just make another bucket which is bucket 2. Now you see, you saw that, okay, how I am making buckets out of my ranges. So first I saw a two overlapping range, a two overlapping, a two overlapping ranges. I made a bucket 1. With that bucket 1, I compare the next range. Is that next range in my bucket 1? If yes, then I will place that range also in my bucket 1. And when I say I place my range, I just expand the end, right end, because left is always here, right. It's just that the right will always expand. Either it will stay same or will expand. So I'll just try to expand the range of my bucket 1. Right. Now I'll check the next range. Because as I sorted them, because I know that, okay, I need to bring the ranges as close to as possible because I need to compare the consecutive ranges only. So I just compared my bucket one with the next range. Oh, it's not common, which means that I have to make it another bucket to place that particular range. So I made a bucket two. And as the buckets are two and the groups are two, so which means that if the buckets have been three, let's say, right? So I would have done a three into three into three, which is a two rich power three. And here as the bucket is 2, so I just did a 2 into 2, which is nothing but a 2 raised power 2. So it's just that a 2 raised power number of buckets we get. Now let's see the problem is pretty statement. Uh, simple. See, here is just a power function which just as the problem statement you saw is just said that we need to return the modulo by n. Right. It's just that, okay, if I am doing a 2 raised to power n modulo, this particular number only 9 plus 7 so it's just that uh, a modular function you can uh, learn if you don't know about this it is exponential so you can just study about uh, how we do a modulo of exponential so it's just that a raised power n mod p where p is the prime number here it is only 9 plus 7 and my a is here too and my n is basically x which is number of buckets so it's just a function which will return me a 2 raised power n or x mod p and p is this mod now let's see the main function here first i sorted my ranges as i said i want to bring my ranges as close to each other as possible i just sorted them good now uh, i just made a, a temporary vector is this vector called temp it's a bucket vector so it's just a bucket vector here firstly uh, i just pushed my first range itself in my bucket here i just push my first range itself in the bucket because i'll just start iterating from the next range because bucket one need to have something right bucket one has the first range now i will just move on from the second range and, and we'll see okay is it possible to bring my second range inside my bucket one if not then okay i'll just make a bucket two but if yes then i will just update my bucket one end index Let's see, so it is last first, which means that if the bucket array is something like this, 
a bucket vector something like this which has my start and end of bucket so it will just point out to the last of this bucket it's a bucket vector right so it has many buckets let's say bucket one bucket two bucket three so it will just point out to the last bucket formed it will just bring the start in the end so it's just the start and the end of the last bucket formed it will just bring the start in the last bucket form now it will check okay if my this end overlaps with the range with this range range which i'm iterating on which the range i was iterating on so is the bucket's end overlaps or is is it my bucket's end this e this bucket's end let's say be is this let's say my range is rs and re so is this is my bucket rs if my rs which means the starting of range is it more than my bucket e if yes then for sure the, the, the particular range it will go on bucket next bucket so i just put that particular range in my next bucket but if not but if it overlaps so firstly i just need to remove this particular let me change the color i just need to remove oh, okay let me i have to remove this particular bucket from this particular bucket array because i need to update my s and e now now my s will remain same as the last bucket but my e will be updated by the, the e right here or this particular re if both of these overlap so i just did a maximum of this particular e which is my buckets end and the re which is the range end so i just get the maximum of out of these two to get the end of the actual bucket so now i just updated my bucket and i just pushed it back into my bucket now ultimately i just wanted to know the number of buckets so it's just the length of this bucket array length of this bucket array will let me know okay how many buckets are there and i just did a two ratio power x mod of that particular number which is mod here i defined a constant as mod as 99 plus 7 so you don't have to worry about it and i just returned the answer so that was it i hope that you guys understood the intention intuition every i you can imagine because computer science is for loop of i but yeah the worst joke i ever listen but yeah i hope that you guys like the video if yes then do hit the like button it helps motivates a lot and see you guys next video then goodbye take care